Yo, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be seeing what kind of fuel mileage we can get by swapping in a set of four hole Bosch injectors from K Suspension. So first thing we're going to do is fill it up with gas, see what kind of mileage I'm getting now out of the injectors I have in there now, come back to the shop, swap them out and see what kind of improvement we get. All right, I got 145 miles on the trip, used a little bit more than half a tank of fuel. So I'm going to go put some gas in it and see what kind of mileage we're getting. We put in 11.6 gallons. We have 145.8 miles on the trip divided by the 11.6 gallons. We just added 12.6 miles per gallon. Eh, that's not too bad. It's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. Anyway, so now that we know what kind of mileage these cheap injectors were giving us, I'm gonna head back to the shop, change out the injectors for the new K suspension ones. Back at the shop, let's get the vet out and the Jeep in. This is actually a really easy job, super simple. Now, the cool thing about K-Suspension, they actually rebuild these Bosch injectors, so they're technically used. They're able to offer them at a really reasonable price, around $120. I also picked up new connections as well. So let's start getting everything off, getting the fuel rail off, and swapping them out. Let me first get all these vacuum lines out of the way. Then we'll pop off our throttle cable and our kick down cable. Remove the bracket that holds them. We'll get that out of the way. Next, we'll unplug all the injectors. This is why I upgraded to the new ones because none of these clips work. You can just pull them all off. Next thing we want to do is take all the fuel pressure out of the rail. We do that by removing this cap. And there's a Schrader valve in here. So I'm gonna try and catch it in a cup and then push down the plunger. Just spilled gas all over the hot intake. That's exactly what you want. Once all the pressure is out, we can remove the fuel rail bolts. Great. Where did that just disappear to? Yes! We should just be able to pull the injectors out of the ports. Maybe. Yep. Like that. Next thing, each injector has a little metal collar on it. Push the collar down. That's what it looks like. And then that should be able to come out. Like that. Each one clip, pull it out. Next thing we wanna do is make sure all the O-rings are out. I'm just using a right angle pick to get in there, get the O-rings out. Same thing with the manifold side of things, get all those O-rings out. I'm gonna quickly vacuum all this up, make sure everything is out of the holes. This paint is starting to flake up really bad. Who I don't know who painted this engine. No, it was me. <laughs> So just to give you an idea, this is actually the only injector that came out completely intact. On the intake manifold side, we have that plastic washer with the rubber O-ring. And then on the fuel rail side, same thing, a smaller plastic washer with a rubber O-ring. So I'm gonna make sure I got all those pieces out before I install the new ones. Quick story about how these blue injectors came about. Um, these are actually a seven hole injector. Stock, my Jeep had the one hole injectors. They're not very good. So I went on eBay and got the eBay special four hole injector and they actually served me pretty well. And then for whatever reason, when I rebuilt this motor, I thought, ah, seven holes is better than four, right? Right? Nah, these are awful. Again, these are like an eBay special. They were very cheap. Even the cheap four holes were better than these. So I'm very curious to see what a quality four hole injector is gonna do. Anyway, let me show you how to prep these new injectors and get them installed. First, you're gonna need some petroleum jelly to lube up them O-rings. Why do I have so much of this? You mind your damn business. Now it does come in handy a lot. All right, I'm gonna stop talking. But it is funny, every time I've done injectors, I just bought a new one of these because I thought I lost it and then I found it. That's why I have two of them. I will say though, on a cold day, you forget your chapstick, you won't be sorry that you had two big old tubs of this. Anyway, pretty much what I'm gonna do is take off all these O-rings like that, get them separated, get a little bit of coating on there of the petroleum jelly, and then simply just stick it back on. And that's all the prep work you need to do. So I'm gonna finish out on them and then we'll put them in the Jeep. Got all them O-rings lubed up. Now we're good to start reinstalling them. So just make sure the side with the connector is going into your fuel rail like that. Put your clip back in. There's a slot on the injector itself 
where this clip goes through. And don't worry about getting the orientation right, right away because you can easily turn them. So let's put on the rest. And if you don't lube up the O-rings, you could risk tearing them apart when you're trying to put them in, because I've done that, been there. Now that the injectors are fully installed into the fuel rail, we can line them back up with their intake port. We'll push them in, and there should be a pretty solid click when they go into place. Reinstall our hardware. Screw in the Schrader valve. Cap. Now we'll go ahead and bust out the wiring kit and get our new pigtails on there. Cut the old one off. Cut this loom apart a little bit. Actually, it's pretty brittle. I should, looks like I'll be able to just rip it apart. Yeah, it just breaks right off. Strip them down. Throw in one of these heat shrink butt connectors. Crimp it. So for the new connector, the orange green, which is closest to the clip, is gonna go to black. And they give you plenty of uh, excess wire, but I don't think I'm gonna use that much. I'll probably cut it, crimp it. I think I'm gonna leave a bit more excess on the next one. This is a little tight. For this next part, make sure you're using a heat gun and not a lighter, especially if you spilled a lot of fuel like I did. And that looks pretty good. See if it clicks into place. Nice. Got one done, five more to go. Same exact process. I'll keep the camera rolling just in case I catch something on fire. Got them all done. As you can see, wrapped them in tape. Good to go. Let's go ahead and put on all these things. Hook up our kick down cable and our throttle cable. Put this back in place. Well, let me fix that real fast. I have no idea if this is gonna work, but I put a piece of heat shrink on there and I'm gonna wrap it with tape. I don't know if that's gonna work, but whatever. Get this one plugged back in. That should be everything. Come inside here, cycle the key a few times so we get fuel up to the rail, and then we'll start it. It would appear we have a successful injector swap. Hi guys, today I'm going to show you what I'm going to draw, and I know how to draw a pizza, so let me show you. It is now a few days later. I was able to put some miles on the Jeep with the new injectors. So what we're going to do, fill it up one more time and see what kind of mileage the new injectors are getting. Back in the shop now, results are in. I didn't even calculate it yet. This time around, I had 132.6 miles on the trip divided by the 10.12 gallons that I added for a total of 13.1 miles per gallon, which is about a half a mile per gallon better. Not bad. Now that alone might not be enough for you to justify uh, spending the money for some better injectors. But I will say this, the Jeep seems to start up a bit faster. It seems to run a little bit better. And I used to have a heat soak issue where if I would idle the Jeep for too long and the injectors got hot, it would run really rough. And that issue seemed to be cleared up. So uh, for me at least, I think it was worth it to buy these injectors. I would definitely do it again. I would definitely recommend it. But with all that being said, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, consider subscribing, take it easy. I'll see you in the next one.